Hey guys, I'm back. So um, today I'm going to be showing you uh, some tips for protoboarding with this sort of protoboard. It's it's the kind that doesn't have strips. Each hole just has a copper circle around it and there's no strips or any connections on the board. So I'm going to be giving you some tips for sort of making this as neat as possible. Now, first thing, what you don't want to do, which you'll see a lot of people on YouTube do, is then, oh, let me fix that glare for a second there. Yeah. Okay. Um, is that they'll wire like um, sort of magnet wire like this on the bottom. You don't want to do that because one magnet wire is hard to work with, and um, it the uh, non-conductive coating can peel off pretty easily when it's scraping against these sharp solder joints because um, the pins are going to be sharp when you cut them off and stuff. So it, that, that could be a problem, you could get shorts. Um, second, it, it's just not neat because you have wires all folded over each other and stuff. So I wouldn't recommend that. Um, also, I've some, seen some people do it with non-conductive wire and solder the wire to these pins. And now while that works and prevents you from, you know, putting wires over each other because the wires are conductive, it's not effective because like on, on almost every design you're going to have to put wires, um, you know, over each other. So what I find I do for connections is first what I do is I solder down the main chip. So I don't know how well you're going to be able to see what I'm doing here because of this, this huge mess of wires. But um, in there is an Arduino. You can probably see it. And um, well, okay. I solder that down first. I solder that, that mess of the chip down first. Okay. So I solder, you, can, you can't see it, but I solder it down first. And then in this design, I had two shift registers. So I solder the microcontroller in the middle because I figured I'm going to need to make a lot of connections to the microcontroller. And yes, I do. Okay, because you can see the microcontroller is all connected. So second, what I'll do is, I, first I solder all the ICs. Okay, that's, that's just the way I work, work. Then I solder the shift registers. These aren't going to need as many connections, so I put them on the side here. Okay, and make sure that if you have a chip like the, every chip that's vertical is aligned the same way, has the notch in the same place. So pin one is going to be, you know, on the, the top like this. And then for all the horizontal ones, these shift registers, make, you, make sure you put the chips in the same orientation. I mean, it's not like it's wrong, but it, it's just much easier to do that, okay? So, and also make sure you give yourself space. You don't want just one row of pins between the shift registers. I gave myself many rows, and you can see, you know, I'm already out of space. So first I do that. Second, I solder down any programming headers. Now I usually solder down the programming headers on the end of the board, okay? And so um, just a tip, if it, like, like um, put one of these female headers on your programming header while you're soldering it, and that just keeps it straight. It keeps it straight and aligned with the board. Um, that's just sort of a tip. You're, you're still going to have to hold it, but the, you can hold these female headers, and you can hold the plastic part and not get burned. Um, and then you can make sure to solder down the header straight. So then I solder down the header and I don't actually solder any of the connections. So then what I'll do is I'll, um, so once you got all your chips down and all your power, uh, sorry, all your programming headers down, is I'll solder up the uh, crystal. You might be able to see that in there. I'll solder up the crystal and the caps so you can see, um, here we have the caps and here we have the crystal. So I'll solder up the crystal and the caps for the microcontroller if there's a microcontroller in the design. Okay. Then what I'll do after that is um, solder up all the power and ground connections. So um, that's important just because, um, well, power and ground obviously are important, but I, I just find it's easiest if you have all the power and ground connections down first. And don't make your wires too long. Like you can see these wires here, they're not like uh, these wires are connected to the LCD externally, so that those are obviously going to be long. But you can see these like ground wires. I ch green is my ground. Make sure you get a good color scheme. So like for here, yellow is power because I ran out of red wire, and green is round because I ran out of black wire. But just make sure y you get a color scheme that works for you, okay, and, and keep it consistent. So um, I solder ground and power and make the wires only the length you need. So what I usually do is if we take um, some wire here, um, let's see, take some green wire. Say I needed to get from this header to this pin right here. What I would do is I would hold the, the wire 
hold it on the pin, and then maybe go a bit, a few centimeters, a centimeter extra. So if we want to get it from here to this pin right here, I might go a few centimeters extra, cut it there, because that gives me room to strip the wire. And that way the wire isn't um, you know, sometimes like you can see here, I needed to curve it or like these purple wires, they go up, they have a little hump in them. That's okay. But as long as your wire isn't snaking all around the place, cause these short wires just really, um, help to get things, you know, like these wires, these are bent up a little bit. That's okay. But don't make them, you know, don't make these wires be like that long cause you don't need them and they're going to take up extra room. So as you can see, like right here, it gets pretty crowded because I'm soldering all the data connections from the shift registers and stuff in it, and it doesn't give much room. But also keep that in mind that say like I knew I needed to connect all these data pins to the shift register, so I sort of made these wires go out so that I could get room to connect my data pins. Okay, so you, you want to keep that in mind as well, where you're going to connect your pins. Um, if you're going to connect, you know, your, your data pins, make sure you move your wires around your data pins. If you go in back and look at my, um, uh, 3D tic-tac-toe, you can see I sort of did that as well. So then once you've connected all your power and ground, um, connect up all the, um, you know, to, to everywhere that it needs to be. Connect up the programming header. So like for this one, you need the um, 10K uh, pull-up resistor on the reset line and the 0.1 microfarad capacitor in series with the reset line. Um, and then just TX to RX and RX to TX on the data. Um, so if you have any programming headers on your design, solder those up. Um, connect it all up and then connect like for this one on the shift register size data lines so like buses connect any buses things that you know things other than power and ground that go to multiple places um, you're going to want to connect those up because those are um, going to be hard to get once you solder up all your data lines so um, then connect up your buses and like I said, again, re remember if you're going to have to connect like some of this multi-stranded wire or a lot of connections, like you have to connect to the data pins on the microcontroller, make sure you leave room around the data pins, physical room to solder in the wires. Okay. So, um, yeah, so make sure you, you, you leave physical room for wires and stuff like that. Um, so then what you're going to want to do after you've connected that is connect all your data pins, all your parallel data pins. So if you're connecting to like an LED matrix or, or, an LCD like this one, connect up all your, um, your, your parallel data pins. You're going to want to do that because um, those will those will get in your way. And after that, usually you're done. You can, you can then connect any external switches and LCDs, sorry for the bad soldering quality, um, to, to, the, to the board and you're done. Um, and always make sure like you leave a bit of extra room on your board like this because I originally said I want a projector clock and um, so I'm going to need a backlight so I'm going to do it with LEDs. So I originally decided well I'll just have the LEDs be constant brightness but nope I, I now want a PWM controller so I left room for a 555 timer here. Um, uh, so always leave a little bit of room on these printer boards because this is like a buck so they're, they're cheap enough that you can afford it to um, spend a dollar you know when you really only needed to spend 90 cents, you know, it's, it's ridiculous. Just get the bigger one because that's what you need. And also make sure that, you know, um, when, when you're soldering, try to leave room between pins. You, you, you can't really see this, but like between the solder pads, if you're soldering in a wire, fold the wire straight over to one or so, uh, either side of the pin. So if like there's a pin here, pretend, and then there's a wire coming on the pin next to it. You want to fold it over the pin at a slight angle. So that way you solder it and it's, ju it's not jutting out to either side. It's only going to the side after the pin. Um, and then you snip it off as close as you can and then snip off the rest of the pin. Um, so that's, that's that. Uh, again, try not to have too many things like this up here next to the alligator clip where it's just a huge, uh, like three power connections connected to one chip because um, try not to have that because it'll one if it's a, a super analog design you may want to do something like a star ground because um, this could ruin your ground reference or just in, in a practicality case you, you could easily run out of room or short to this thing much more easily so try to try to eliminate these as much as possible unless it's intentional so if you what you could do is if you want a star ground or, or really just to make um, your life easier is mark this with a sharpie, just a black sharpie on the top and bottom of the board that this last row is a, is a ground. So 
you're going to solder your wires to here and don't bother to solder them together. Just solder your wires into the last row and say this top row up here, even though I didn't do it, could be your power rail. So solder all your power wires up to here. And then when you're done, just get a piece of copper wire and lay it over the rail and solder it to every wire so they're all connected. And then you can solder your um, power connections up to those rails because that, that can give you a nice star ground. And it can also, it, it can be very easy. So I've done that in the past, it's easy. But this, this just didn't have enough power connections to justify it. And if you're doing a lot of just um, discrete circuitry, like I did on this, function generator. Um, you know, I left myself a lot of room. These resistor legs are bent around. So keep in mind that you can also use the legs of components as, as wires. So you may not have to, like for this crystal here, you can see the legs bend over. That's another thing is, is crystals, right? Because they're, they're separated apart. There's a separate pin between them. And this can make your life difficult because usually on microcontrollers, the crystal pins are XTAL, as they're going to be called in the data sheet. Are right next to each other so what I did I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see this here um, is I soldered the crystal with uh, two rows of holes between the crystal and the chip and then um, soldered the caps on the other side of the crystal and then on the bottom side uh, one of them one of the leads goes straight and the other lead goes bent over but since a crystal is high frequency you know 16 megahertz usually uh, you know, maybe a 32 kilohertz crystal, but it's usually going to, you know, for most microcontrollers, be running in the range of 16 megahertz, 8, 8 megahertz, 20 megahertz. So it's, it's high frequency. So you want to have those leads coming from the crystal to the microcontroller be as short as possible. Like you wouldn't want to solder your crystal over here and then run wires over here because you could get um, crosstalk on your data lines or it could mess with your data lines or something, and it, it might not work effectively. So you don't want to do that. You want to put your crystal as close to the microcontroller as possible. And you also want to put these caps as close to the crystal as possible. Because this, um, this method of building can have some capacitance um, it just, just from the board. And so since these are small capacitors, you know, maybe 16 or 22 picofads, depending on your crystal, uh, you don't want the capacitance of the board to change the capacitance of the capacitors, you know, through a series or parallel capacitors, and, um, and then your crystal may not start oscillating sometimes. So keep that in mind. Um, and then also, if, if you have shift registers on your board, a handy tip is, you probably can't see this, but mark which one's the first one, second one, third one, up to how many, just with a Sharpie or a pen or a, a sticker if you want. Um, do that because that's that's makes that makes it handy just at a glance to know the, the propagation of the data. Also, if you have a microcontroller, you can do something like what I've done up here, which is print out the pinout. Or what you can do is uh, SparkFun sells their microcontroller, uh, the AT Megas at least, with the stickers overlaid on of which pins are data, crystal, analog, and that's really handy. Um, so if if, if your microcontroller doesn't come with that, or any IC for that matter, you can print out your, print yourself out a little sticker, and it'll save you a lot of time from going back and forth. Um, so, um, yeah, those are really my tips for uh, proto-boarding. So, you know, try it out, and because uh, this is the way I build up all my stuff. I don't make PCBs or anything, uh, but I want to get into that, but, you know... PCBs are kind of expensive, and this stuff is cheap, and I, I have decent practice with this stuff, so I don't have much practice designing PCBs. But even if you can design PCBs and you need to build something up really fast, you can have some of this stuff and build something up like this much faster than you could actually buy a PCB. Um, just, in, in general, just take your time um, to make everything, make connections neat. Don't rush it. Take your time. Um, check everything. If you think pins are shorted together, um, you know, um, with a wire or something, check. Uh, if pins are shorted together, you know, use a soldering pump. So um, take your time, and uh, I wish you luck with building all your proto-boarded things, and um, thanks for watching.